là do tình nhân em biểu đó chốn xa muôn trùng yêu của em gửi về ca trang em cài là muôn tình thưa nỗi nhớ 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 người nhân tình thề trọn đời một lòng thương em ca trang em cài bằng khi nào em đâu biết ai anh đã làm bằng khi bằng viên đạn đầu ai anh đã làm bằng viên đạn đồng san trói ai cúp của quân thù làm một ngày gửi về cho em ai nhớ ai phải chăm em cài để làm tin tình của mình đó chăm hỡi chăm mày làm sao nhớ 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 thương tình nhân cái chăm em cài là do tình nhân em biếu đó đang chi đâu nào một viên một viên đạn đồng thế sao đêm ngày ngồi mơ rồi thương với nhớ 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 người nhân tình đã thể nguyện cùng mình sẽ duyên Thuân Ben Nixon. Uh, I am the country director for Animal Asia in Vietnam. Um, I started working for Animal Asia uh, in 2004. My name is Mandala Hunter Ishikawa. I'm a veterinarian from the U.S. Um, I've been working for Animals Asia for over two years. My name is Sarah Dempsey. I'm a bear manager here at the Vietnam Bear Rescue Center. Jill Robinson uh, from Animal Asia. She came to Vietnam and she started looking at how she can help this bear much more. And she wanted to start a, a rescue center here. So that's when I started to volunteer for Animal Asia, and that's where I started. I first came across Animals Asia online. Um, I think I read an article about bears in Asia, and I clicked, and um, there was a lot of information on the website. And one day I saw the link that said careers, and then there was a job opening for, for a veterinarian. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I ended up here. I was so happy when they accepted me to come and work with bears. To work with Animals Asia is truly an honor. It really is a dream job. I met Anne-Marie and Nicola from the China Center at a conference that I was presenting at and saw some more videos from Animals Asia and spoke with them and just became a lot more aware of the overall work and the extent of the issues. sợ mình không dám đến gần. Rồi <cười> tỏ tay nó bợp cho vát như vậy. Cái gheo đấy điểm gì anh? Bố trơn à? À à. Mấy tấm kêu gì cả? Kêu rồi. bơm khí vào để xong mình hút lại người ra.
the international Bell Bao Chue around the world, which is mostly Vietnam, China, and uh, South Korea, is around $2 billion a year. In Vietnam, uh, although it's illegal, uh, it's quite sad that you know, the government has banned it, but just like any illegal product, you can still buy it. There is a, a street in Hanoi, it's called uh, La Nong Street. It's a traditional medicine street where they sell a lot of the traditional medicine products. You can go down there and ask them and they'll sell you bell bao. Bell bao in Vietnam has been uh, in use for, I would say, thousands of years. It's very much entrenched in the society using bear bow. It mainly used for reducing swellings or reducing heat. So uh, bear bow is regarded as a cold medicine. But these days, besides those kind of medical uses, the men in Vietnam they mix the the bao with the rice wine and they drink it. But như này là đạt chuẩn rồi. Cái kia thì đến 70 cc. A lot of the bao has been produced now. It's not for traditional medicine anymore, but for this, you know, this what we call the recreational drugs. We have been working with the uh, Vietnam Traditional Medicine Association and they have come here and, uh, to help us build this garden. And here we grow 28 of the 32 herbal alternatives that I've been using by many of the doctors in Vietnam instead of a bear bow to treat various illnesses. The herbal alternatives are in plentiful and they're cheap and they're natural and they're safe. This is what we're trying to promote and this is part of our work trying to reduce the demand of bear bow. And at the moment there's 1,000 trillion bears on bear farm in Vietnam. And if you want to end bear bow farming in Vietnam, you must remove all the bear from bear farm and put them into a safe place. We have very good help from the local government. It had been shown with the Quang Ninh rescue. It's been amazing. They were with us with all the rescue. And sometimes it took, you know, like six, seven hours, you know, on a very hot day to rescue the bear, but they're still there. They still help us. It's very important that we have that help. We try and keep it limited to as few people as possible for the rescues um, and the vet team are the most important to be there because they usually need to give initial health checks and sometimes like GAs in the field for certain bears. We go as a, a big team to go get the bears off the farms. So sometimes they require an anesthetic to be out of their cage and sometimes they can be just hooked up and then they walk through with honey. And then our BTS Tuan, who's one of our local staff who's been with us for a very long time and is very experienced with working the transport cages. He will go with a number of our team leaders as well.
When they come back here, the bears go through a 45-day quarantine period. So that's just to protect the new bears as well as our resident bears. They do come in for a full health check. So we anesthetize the bears. We check every part of them that we can check. Seeing where the bears come from and knowing how long some of them have been in those situations, um, it's completely heartbreaking. When they come to the center, they have broken teeth that are abscessing usually. Their teeth break because they didn't have a proper diet growing up, and they also, out of frustration, they bite the bars and they break the teeth. For bears that are quite stressed, we use like rescue remedy and different combinations of the flower remedies. Even on the surgery table, when they're going for a general anesthetic, they have a drop of the rescue remedy on their tongue as well. A lot of bears, because of the poor nutrition and the stress, they have cataracts or signs of um, high blood pressure. Some bears are actually blind. Because of the bile extraction process, they can also have bacteria in their gallbladder. They can have gallstones in their gallbladder that causes problems and inflammation and pain. Um, we also see arthritis in bears that are younger, um, that probably shouldn't have arthritis yet because they've been in a small cage their whole lives without any ability to move around much. They have a pretty big range. Most bears would range across very large areas of Vietnam and their Asiatic black bear range is throughout Asia. Here we have around 11 hectares of land which we've divided up and obviously we offer them the best space that we have available. We do have bears that have been rescued um, that live at the sanctuary that are missing limbs. So they're missing either front leg or a paw or part of their foot, or they have scars across their body. Um, and that's from being caught in the wild. For some bears, like the little cubs, it might seem easier because they've not been through the bile farms, but at the same time, they've been taken from their mother so young, so unnaturally young, and that causes its own range of issues. One of the main things also is behavioral problems. So some of the bears have stereotypic disorders, so they'll do a certain motion over and over again for no reason other than to cope with the environment that they've had. The bears has an individual personality and slightly different character traits, and some of the bears that have been through the worst situations and look the worst, like they're physiologically just look in a very bad way, are some of the most forgiving, who instantly are very friendly with staff, they don't show aggression, and then some bears show aggression when they arrive. They've been through the stress of moving from the farm. But they do, usually over time, even within a few days of having really nice things, honey, apples, pears, you know, things that are nice all the time, and we never hurt the bears. So um, they do start trusting people, it's amazing. The nicest thing is you see that they do learn to trust people quite quickly, um, on the most part very quickly, which I think is a testament to them as animals and what we've put them through as people, for them to be that accepting of us is, is incredible.
I don't think any other species could be farmed like this. Um, the bears are so resilient, they're so stoic, and um, they are, they trust people again and they can go out and it seems like they make the most out of the life that is given to them. we wanted to release bears then we simply don't have the programs or the protected habitat in place to do so. It's not to say that in the future we won't because we are working with different NGOs and universities to try and establish areas of land for that in the future. We don't have a choice to release them into the forest. One of the major reasons is that they already have problems from living in captivity from, from the time they were most likely babies so they don't really have many skills to be out in the wild. We got two more enclosures to build to complete the time of bear sanctuary. After that, we need to look at other sanctuary as well, because if the bears are still on the farm, the farm will continue to extract the bow and the bear continue to suffer. And we call it environmental enrichment and it basically just is anything that is stimulating within their environment and enriching their environment. So environmental enrichment can be anything from the enclosure itself, which offers enrichment in the forms of smell, sights, scents, um, opportunities to dig, insects, natural trees. You can see that most of them have actually finished foraging for food and that's when it gets a little bit quieter. You get the odd individual that'll be playing. There's somebody playing with some browse over here. Quite a few bears playing on top of the platform. When we got here, there was nothing here. There was no road, there was water here, but there's no electricity and we have to design the whole sanctuary and then try to recruit the staff to work here. Here we have um, just over 80 people and uh, the majority of the people that work here are local people who live just around the, the Tam Dao National Park. We have staff like Tuan, our BTS, and Chen is our other BTS, which stands for Bear Team Supervisor. So they are staff that we've had for a while that have showed the initiative to be very capable in leadership roles and very good with the bears and the day-to-day -day husbandry. Through our training, now they become experts at it, and we also raise their awareness on the warfare as well. I think a lot of our staff now really love bears and they love animals. It's a slow process, but we, we're really pleased with how well they're doing and hopefully in the future we'll be able to take on more people in that way. By having all these people work here, we're helping the local economy. And we also buy all the local food and vegetables for the bears from the local market. You know, bear eat, you know, five kilograms of food and veg uh, vegetable every day. So 148 bears, that's a lot of food and vegetable that we buy every day. Between the vets and the bear managers, we manage diets across the centre for every individual bear and that includes taking age considerations, uh, weight considerations and seasonal variations. We have 148 bears to look after, to feed. Uh, we also have teams like the, the maintenance team to keep the sanctuary running. 
security team to keep the place safe. Sau thì anh tiếp quản ngay ngay cạnh đi rồi. And of course we have an education team to, you know, to educate the people. We definitely have a lot of local people come and visit and a lot of school groups, particularly from Hanoi and a little further afield. Um, and I definitely see like children up to university age seem to be the most concerned. A lot of the parents are the bio user. The, the children don't use the bio, they, they don't use bare bio at all. So we need to convince you know, the parents, but I think the children can, can do it for us very, very, very well. They show a lot of compassion and I think um, it's with that generation to make the biggest change and they definitely seem like a generation that would be capable of that. It's very important for the, you know, for the single person to raise his or her voice about how they feel about the bear and how they can help the bears. There's also a lot of other issues that Animals Asia and other NGOs address too, um, like the cat and dog meat trade and also the critical endangerment of a number of different species. So if you are really interested in the work of Animals Asia and think what we're doing is a great thing, then please share it with everybody, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or by email or just showing friends. What anybody can do is just donate a little bit of money every year and, and be a supporter. When we have those many of these single you know, person together, it become a big force and we can help change. Please be aware that it, this is a multifactorial problem, um, especially with wildlife trade. So do your best to learn more and spread the word. Mm -hmm.